Oh, hi. I didn't see you standing there. You want to come in? You want to see something scary? <laughs> hey, sinners, how you doing? You're listening to the Sinful Cuts podcast, the podcast where Sean O'Connor and Shannon Bushman Montalbano break down some of your favorite horror films. We take a look at all the decades, the wild, weird, and wonderful world of horror and all it has to offer. So sit back, tune in, and have some fun. Here we go. Hey, hey. sitters, I'm Shannon. And I'm Sean. And this is Sinful Cuts. Woo-hoo. And this handsome <laughs> man that we have in the third screen here is none other than Jonathan Jans. No, I'm talking about you. <laughs> Jonathan, you and you you battle it out with Stephen Graham Jones for the handsomest men in horror fiction. I'm I'm putting it out there. Dang man, <laughs> you put in that category in that in that company. That is pretty un- good company, right? Yeah, it's a really good company. Yeah, Stephen Graham Jones. Yeah, he's definitely he's definitely a, definitely a handsome dude. Uh well thank right. you. Thanks so much for having me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. I was just going to say that we had Paul Tremblay on last week, and he's like, how come I wasn't nominated for Most Handsome Man? What the hell? <laughs> I'm going to get oh, an angry, uh-huh. angry email from Paul. <laughs> Jonathan, I want to go through your accolades. Holy cow. Filled up my notebook. For gosh <laughs> sakes here. Okay, so Jonathan Chan's work has been championed by authors like Joe Lansdale. Holy cow. I mean, right there. Joe Lansdale, Jack Ketchum, mm-hmm. Brian Keane. He's also been lauded by Publishers Weekly, Library Journal, and School Library Journal. Additionally, his novel, Children of the Dark, was chosen by Booklist as a top 10 horror book of the year. Congratulations. That's fantastic. His, awesome. his, his ghost story, The Siren and the Specter, was selected as a Goodreads Choice nominee for Best Horror. In March 2023, Jonathan won the Wilbur Thomas, Wilburn Thomas Award uh, at Scares the Care, this award is given to authors who have helped other writers and their community. That's fantastic. That's such a fantastic award to uh, to have to get uh, words. <laughs> His books <laughs> include The Sorrows, Wolfland, Exorcist Bowl, and The Dismembered, just to name a few. Jonathan, thank you so much for being on. What is What do you have right now that you're super excited about? What work can we look forward to? Yeah, I have. Thank you for that, by the way. That was a very awesome and humbling <laughs> intro. <laughs> um, yeah, I right now I have uh, uh, Children of the Dark 1 was re-released in December and uh, Children of the Dark 2, the sequel just came out at the end of April. So those two I'm really high on right now and wanting people to read. Um, I have a ton of other stuff coming, but I'd say those two are really good places to start. If people are new to my work, that'd be a good place for them to, to, to begin. And we had the dismembered not that long ago. So, yeah. I mean, you're on a roll. Is it 18? Is it 18 or 19 novels? <laughs> it's so fun. I don't even know. It's, uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a it's lot. Like that. Yeah, it's quite a few. Um, and then there are a few that are in the queue, um, either with publishers already or being shopped to publishers. So, and I'm working on one now that I'm, I'm more excited about than anything I've ever worked on. So yeah, it, it, uh, there's a lot, yeah, a lot of fun stuff going on. Oh man, that's exciting. That's exciting. So sinners, you have this whole <clears throat> back catalog and there's so much there waiting for you. And like Jonathan just said, we have got stuff on the horizon to get excited about. Um, I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, hopefully embarrass you right now, Jonathan, because I said the same thing to John Lang, and, and this is, these are true words. Oh, great, it's great. not smoke, I promise you. When John was on, I, I, I told him that um, when, when I talk to other horror authors, and this, and this goes for you very much, just like, like John, when I talk to other horror authors and I pick their brain, hey, who are you reading? You know, who, do, who do you recommend? Who do you like? Your name comes up so much. Wow. Mm-hmm. They they look at me and they go, "You got the new Jans?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I got the new Jans." They're like, "Okay, good." Like it, like I'm, I'm almost like, I'm not in trouble, am I? We're like, we're gonna, we're gonna fight, win. Like, you'll like, me win. Like you got yeah. the good stuff, right? The good stuff. Okay, then you'll be all right. <laughs> Your name comes up all the time. So it does. That, that <laughs> accolade right there. It's got to feel great. 
I got chills. Honestly, that was amazing. Thank you. Holy smokes. Um, Langan, if you write the fisherman, like your name should come up again and again and again and again in every conversation in perpetuity. I mean, like Langan is such an amazing writer. And then, you know, you've already mentioned Stephen Graham Jones and Paul Tremblay. I mean, like we, we've got there's I don't know. It's just it's such an exciting time, isn't it? Like to, it is to really incredible is. Time. <laughs> yeah, so many wonderful writers. Um, I just uh, did a I did a show about a month ago with Tanana Do and her oh. husband, um, Stephen. And uh, I, I, I was reading at the time the, the Reformatory and it just won the Stoker for best novel. What? Two nights ago. Um, yeah. yeah. One of the best. Yeah. One of the best books I've read in a decade. Um, just extraordinary. It's wow. just, I don't know. I, I'm just rambling, but I don't know. You started talking about Langan and all the other. I'm like, hey, <laughs> writers, it's so funny right now. It's such a crazy time in horror. I agree with you 100. It I, it almost feels like um it almost feels like that boom that we had in the 80s, mm -hmm. where it was you, you just couldn't turn without bumping into another great work and another great work. And hey, look, I hate to break it to you, but you're part of that. You're absolutely part of that. Your work is tremendous. Thank you. Oh gosh, thank you so much. I'm <laughs> extremely humbled. Thank you. Yeah. You're very welcome. So oh oh sorry, Shannon, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, like, oh, like you guys were saying, it's such an exciting time. It's like, I feel like lately, like, even though, like, everybody, we're all getting older, you know, like, obviously, no one's getting younger. But in a way, mentally wise, it, I feel like we're all getting younger. <laughs> like, what? I feel like, you know what I mean? Like, I like I totally like reliving like my uh, like all my childhood, you know, fantasies and, you know, both in books and films and, you know, things that are coming back with sequels, you know, like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice coming back, you know, for yeah. like 30 years later, I'm just like, I get to be a little kid again, you know, yes. um, in so many different ways and so many different angles. And it's just, it's such an exciting time, especially for horror. It's, you know, it really is. A, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I, I, I wish I could attribute to this, to the right person, but somebody said that there's a big difference between childish and childlike. Right. And childlike ah. is such a wonderful way to be. And that's how I feel. Honestly, I just feel very childlike you're talking about. I just with all that, with so many great things coming from so many great directions, both in, in book form and movie form and TV form. It's really an extraordinary time. So I, I have that childlike wonder and excitement. Just I feel like that daily, which is a really cool way to feel. I didn't I don't know what I thought I would feel like as an adult, but it's not like this. I thought it would be different. It's yeah. Much better than I yeah. thought it would be. Right. Well, because everyone always tells me too, like, don't get old. And I'm like, but there's so many stuff coming out. I have to read. I have to watch. I have to, there's right. so much to do. Right. <laughs> like, what am I going to do in the afterlife? I have to figure it out. <laughs> when I was a kid and I thought about being an adult, I thought uh, like I would be reading a newspaper still in like a tie and like loafers. And I was like, that sounds like, horrible. Like Mr. Deets. <laughs> Yeah. Bird watching. <laughs> I don't want any of that. And yeah, look, did, thankfully, uh, look, it, it, none of that happened. There it is right there. <laughs> our, Jonathan, the first question we always ask our guests uh, after thanking them for coming on. You're a, you're a true champ. Thank you so much. Thanks, um, the first question we have is, I sent you an email. It had a list of possibly 25, 30 movies. You picked Evil Dead 2. Why? <laughs> I, um, I, I just, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think the two that we had, we, we bandied about, like we narrowed it, narrowed it, narrowed it. I think I'd sent you a few choices or a few possibilities. Yeah. We got it down to a couple, but I think evil dead Two, what it, what appealed to me, it's kind of like what we talked about. It's so, it makes me feel that childlike wonder. And it was, it was a movie It came out in 87. So I was pretty young when it came out. And, um, it's funny because back then when it came out, I was both frightened of it and I thought it was hilarious at the same time, like simultaneously both of those things. And it's just such a fun movie. It's so, it's so well done. I just rewatched it with my 16 year old daughter. She'd never seen it. And we watched it, um, finished it two nights ago, but dang, um, um, I think that, I don't know. Life is just so heavy. Sometimes um, my son is graduating from high school. My, my first child, my, my oldest child, and, and maybe I, I just, I was looking for, and that's all good stuff. It's happy. I'm, I'm so proud of him and all that stuff, but it's obviously a big milestone and a lot of change. Yeah. And maybe my mind just went there because I wanted that refuge of fun 
and enjoyment and childlike glee that the movie just just thrums with. So maybe maybe that's why it really jumped out to me. I just I love Evil Dead too. I I, I use it in uh, some of my classes. I I use it in my film class. Um, oh, that's yeah. great! Cool. Yeah, Very so cool. cool. Well, uh, it, Shannon and I did our shorter episode. We have an episode that we call Shortcuts, where we just talk about books, movies, and horror news for the week. And we were just talking about Evil Dead, and it was the birthday of Drag Me to Hell, and we were we were trying to figure out what our favorite Raimi was. And the great thing is it's like an embarrassment of riches because there's so much good stuff there. Um, I, I, I really do love drag me to hell, but I'd have to say that evil dead two. So I was a teenager when I, I saw this movie and it kind of, it's funny because evil dead, the first one, I always tell this to Shannon, uh, you know, back in the day, back in the olden times, we'd had this thing called a newspaper and we'd <laughs> open it up. And I was even back then as a as a little snot nosed kid, I'd quickly go to the movie section to see what was coming out that uh, that Friday. Yeah. And I remember the ad for Evil Dead, the first one in eighty one, with the, the woman half in the ground and she's getting strangled and she's reaching up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it terrified me. Terrified me. Yeah. And then fast forward six years to Evil Dead Two, and it's the ad. I'm, <laughs> leafing through the paper and it's the skull with the human eyes looking out and that scared the hell out of me <laughs> i was like oh, damn you sam Raimi! i'm no sleep tonight for me but it's <laughs> it's just so he's so creative i mean i know we'll get into it well you know we'll unpack it all he's so creative and inventive so with with that said let me do what we call the hard yards where we just quickly talk about who was involved in the film so uh we have uh, directed by Sam Raimi, of course, screenplay by Sam Raimi and Scott Spiegel, produced by Robert uh, Tappert, who would then go on to produce a lot of Raimi's work. Uh, cinematography by uh, Peter Deming and the music by Joseph uh, LaDuca. It's released by um, Rosebud Releasing, and uh, yeah, it had a budget of $3.5 million and the box office was, was 5.9. So it almost doubled its money, but more importantly, uh, oh, and of course, starring Bruce Campbell as as Ash. I do, doing the research for this, I, I realized that it's Ashley Joanna Williams is his name. Really, middle oh, name Joanna. I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't know it was Joanna. I knew it was Ashley. Wow. It's absolutely Raimi busting his buddy's chops because <laughs> you know they're 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 good friends. Bruce Campbell is Sam Raimi, so I got I got a big kick out of that. <laughs> but uh yeah, I mean boy named Sue. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's talk about it again. We have the first one comes out in 81. It's basically like a calling card for <laughs> Sam Raimi. It is inventive. A lot of people say that that Evil Dead 2 is is a, is a you know, oh, it's just a remake of Evil Dead 1. I, it's 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 not even remotely. It's the same location and they have a couple of the same beats and some of the same camera work, but Evil Dead 2 is its own movie in its own regard mm. and it's just bananas in the best way possible it i just love yeah. everything about it i'm not i'm not exactly sure how true this is because i really think army of darkness was technically supposed to be the next you know movie but they just didn't have the budget to pull off like the medieval um like the medieval uh you know the the sets the the armor the you know whatever it's a so lot they of got money it yeah, so they got it obviously a little bit, um, probably to kind of force ha to have finally, ha you know, force Army of Darkness to be made, um, okay. which is why I think they went with the ending that they made. But I, I have a feeling like it was kind of like a budget thing. So Sam Raimi was like, all right, fuck it. Let me try to go back to the cabin. <laughs> <laughs> and instead of doing, you know, like, let, let me follow like the same storyline. But, um, but he, you know, I think he added more characters, right? Or, or just random characters. Um, Fleshed was, out the story. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously, the, it, you know, they had a set, which I think they made it into a high school. Right. Like, so the, for the most part, like they weren't in the middle of the woods um, and in a dilapidated, falling apart cabin Gosh. where they got very sick, <laughs> very yeah. hurt. Um, so this time they had a little bit of a better budget and, you know, so that things were much safer. Um, you know, Greg Nicotero, I know, worked on it with um, uh, 
forgive me, I can't remember their names at the moment, but he, I know he worked on uh, Robert quite a Kurtzman. Bit of the, yes, yeah. yes, thank you. And his team, you know, did a lot of the uh, the uh, the special effects and whatnot. So it's uh, yeah, it just I, it just had a better start to it. So you know, why not? And I thought it was a, I thought it the the end result was very fun. Yeah, I had no idea Nick Katero worked on that. I didn't, and I, yeah. I'm about to lose my horror card. Um, I <laughs> I have never seen Drag Me to Hell. That's, that's okay. okay. That's, that's okay. okay. It's waiting for you. I know. Yeah. I need to see it. I've wanted it <laughs> years. It came out in 2007, I think. My my son, my son was born in 2005, and so like I was just so much in that mode. And then my daughter in in 2000. No shoot. Yeah, 2007. <laughs> And then my third <laughs> child in 2010. So it was like right in the in the midst of all the births and all the newborns. Yeah. And just wasn't what I would watch, right, with them in the room. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I missed some movies between like 2005 and 2010, and that was one of the main ones. I've, I've heard so many great things about it. I've heard, you know, I mean, I, people talk about the ending all the time. Just the other day, the ending was like talked about on Twitter. Uh, Allison Lohman. I think, isn't she the actress? Mm -hmm. She like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Best ending, and she said, "I beg to differ. I'm gonna yeah, guess it was great. That something that bad happened. I'm gonna guess, but anyway, I need to see. <laughs> Take me to hell. I really got to see it. Yeah, she gets put through the ringer, Allison Loman. That's <laughs> what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, and she did a lot. I mean, we were talking about it before that she did a lot of her own stunts, and you'll when you see what she does, you're gonna go, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, I'm almost jealous that you're going to be able to watch this for the first time. It's, yeah. yeah I, oh, you're going to have so much fun with it. Yeah. So, guys, so I just, I wrote down some notes on the just the first 10 minutes of the movie. Because this is how crazy this movie is. So, <laughs> within the first 10 minutes, yes. you have, okay, you have the establish, you're establishing the Necronomicon. You have, well, well, where, okay, you have the history of the Necronomicon. Uh, which is iconic. You've got uh, oh, Ash plays piano. What? Okay, that's fantastic. I love okay. his, I love <laughs> the look on his face as he plays the piano and she dances in the background. He's so <laughs> contemplative as he's playing. Whether he's playing or not, who knows? But I love his acting in that moment. <laughs> it reminded me so much, and there's so much of the Looney Tunes influence for Sam Raimi and on this movie. It reminded me of when Bugs Bunny's playing the piano because it's the same thing. It's just so it's serious. <laughs> so Ash plays piano, I absolutely love. Um, we Okay, we have the playing of the tape recorder and the unleashing of the of the demon uh, from the Necron Necronomicon. And then we get that crazy, inventive camera movement, which is just that racing camera, which I found out, I was doing a little research, and I found out they put the camera in the box uh, so it wouldn't get damaged and they literally were smashing through, you know, it's, 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 it's movie glass and stuff like that, but they really were smashing this damn camera through everything. And I just, mm -hmm. it you see camera work like that and you immediately know it's a Sam Raimi film, right. you know, when, when you get those rushes like that, I love it. Um, so he's announcing himself with this movie very much. So, okay. L poor Linda gets possessed. We have Linda beheaded. No, remember, Guys, this is in the first 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> when it's beheaded, Ash becomes possessed. We get the the another quick cam of Ash going through the forest. We get that incredibly great practical effect makeup of Demon Ash with the big elongated chin right. and those sunken eyes. I mean, the, the practical in this movie is gorgeous. Yeah. And then we have... Um, then the sun comes up. We kind of learn that, okay, if you can make the sun rise, maybe you have a fighting chance of getting out if you're possessed. And then and then Ash is trapped because, you know, the ne Necronomicon is like, oh, no, no, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and the bridge is – there's that great shot of the bridge with the uh, with the beams almost like a hand. Right. And yeah. <laughs> within, within, that ten, within that 10 minutes, we've got this inventive camera work. We've got the use of models – and all of these layering techniques that were used in Hammer Horror. So we've got callbacks to Amicus and Hammer and AIP and Roger Corman and all of these like kind of like wink, wink tricks on the cheap, but he does them well. But it's also like you can see the, the love pouring through oh. from Sam Raimi. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. it's if. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Josh. No, I was going to say it was actually very, very influenced by the Three Stooges. 
like the oh, whole yeah. time. Like, yeah, like Sam Sam Raimi almost like made everybody kind of nuts just because he wouldn't stop like joking around the entire time. <laughs> 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 and he tortured the shit out of his brother Ted, apparently, um, who was the dead eye Henrietta. I had and no idea that was Ted it, Raimi. Not yeah, so, yeah, I didn't so, know that until today, yeah. So a fun fact about that one. So obviously, if you remember Henrietta, she's, you know, a plump, you know, woman. And so that's a complete bodysuit that Ted is immersed in. Uh, and it, it's, you know, like... It, at all. It, uh, no, no. So they said, like, by the day, he was just losing more and more weight because, like, they would take it off of him and the sweat literally pouring out of him. So there's, I, I mean, I couldn't tell you the exact, you know, minute and second, but the part where he's like flying, you know, where obviously he's like on a, a some sort of like a hanger and he's just going like, like a fan yes. or whatever, like, you know, but you can actually see. So he, apparently he got like a big hole in his crotch area because <laughs> it just ripped, it just ripped, you know, whatever. And they're like, well, we only have one. So just use it, you know, and they just used camera angles to kind of hide it. <laughs> but there's a scene where you can see <laughs> that it, when you, uh, the feet are turning, like basically towards the camera, and you just see like a little sweat just pour. Out. Oh no! <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, then, and it's in the shot. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's a trooper. That is definitely a trooper. I mean, I yeah. know he's his brother, but there's you know, sibling torture is still a thing. I know. Trust me, I know. <laughs> And the fluids, oh, yeah. the fluids would fit right in with all the other fluids in the movie, right? It's a very yeah. <laughs> it's a very oh yeah yeah yeah. It it wasn't until they pointed it out that I was like, oh, that's that's tense sweat. Oh, wow. okay. Wow, that's <laughs> wild. Oh my god, you nailed it. You nailed it when you said that there was such a, a Three Stooges influence on the mm -hmm. movie because it just it it starts out with that crazy ten minutes and it just really just ramps up. And there's so much slapstick. And you guys let me know if I'm wrong. This I can't remember a film. So this was 87. <laughs> we definitely had the movie in, in 81. But I feel like the movie in 81 tried to lean more into like this is a legitimate horror horror movie. Yes. And not so much, uh, not a lot of comedy. This was this is such a great hybrid of that horror comedy. Shannon and I were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, Jonathan, with um, uh, American Werewolf in London. Oh, yeah. How you know, that was 81, and I couldn't for the life of me remember a, a horror comedy that was successful yeah. or even a movie that actually tried it. And then this is great. We have six years later, and you get you get Evil Dead 2. I, I feel like Sam Raimi was so lucky that this didn't have that this wasn't released by uh, like a studio that it was that Rosebud uh releasing because it feels very much like it didn't have um. It didn't have a lot of stu studio influence because he takes everything, including the kitchen sink. He does everything in this movie. And you know, if this was a studio film, they'd be like, well, you can do 10% of that. Right. You're going crazy. <laughs> you know, like you're literally going crazy on film. But it works. It wow. absolutely works. It does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's it funny. You're talking it. about, I love that you isolated the first 10 minutes. Uh, Juliet, I call her Jewel online, but whatever. Her name is Juliet, but she's my 16 year old. She's my horror movie buddy. So we watch every horror movie together. She, nice. um, yeah. And so she, the only, so she's seen Evil Dead Rise. We've seen that twice. She loves it. I love it. Um, oh, I do too. Yeah. It's so, so good. She's seen Evil Dead from 2013 or whatever the Evil Dead, whatever it's called from 2013. And she liked it, um, you know, because it's fun and bloody and really gory. But uh, she, when we were starting this one, it was about the 10 minute mark. In fact, I, that's what she said. Is this movie like really short? I'm like, I don't know. It's like probably I think it's 90 minutes. And she's like, I'm like, why? She's like, there is so much happening. <laughs> so much that that's happened already. Where can you go after this? It's like the main right. character is possessed. His his girlfriend is dead, or his fiance is dead, right? You've already had the neck because in um in in Evil Dead Rise, which is a different beast, but also awesome. You know, I think they build more to the recitation part, right? Like the, the yeah does the DJ stuff when he finally plays it on the on the record, however he plays it. I feel like that is is deeper into the movie certainly than ten minutes. 
And, um, and so Juliet was just, she was just like totally bewildered. She's like, what could possibly happen for another 80 minutes? Because they've shown everything. <laughs> and, and, and I just kind of smiled because I, I hadn't watched the whole thing all the way through probably since college. Um, but I still, I just remembered from that. I just remember that it has that manic energy. Something is always happening all the way through, really. Even mm -hmm. though a lot happens in the 10 minutes, it's not like there are lulls, right? It just yeah. goes. No. <laughs> it's the impossible. Yeah, there's not really a boring part in the whole film, you know? No, no. <laughs> And, and and we as a you know I'll talk this as the the older guy on the podcast um you know back then I discovered this movie with friends through VHS and you know living room lights are dark there's 13 14 you know kids watching this movie and it melted our face yeah and it was it was also one of those movies where I kind of became aware like oh girls can like this too forgive me shan i would dumb kid you forgive me <laughs> now no, i'm just a dumb okay. adult but i didn't you know i thought it was very much like oh i can't talk about horror movies with girls you know i i i'm already only 87 pounds at the age of 16 and, and three foot 11 so talking about horror <laughs> movies was just like what it was one bridge too far for me i was like you know it. <laughs> but I started to realize I'm like, oh my gosh, like they're into this too. And that opened up a whole new world for me, you know, mm. as far as, as like seeing what the horror community had and you're like, oh yeah, it's all inclusive and we can all have fun with this. And man, it just didn't stop from there. We probably watched that movie 20 times that summer, at least 20 times. Well, it just yeah. became one of those go-to like, oh, what does everybody want to watch tonight? Put an evil dead. Cause you, you didn't have to wait to hit those beats, you know, like, oh, wait, this is the part where he's in the cellar. And then they're talking about the dead wife and the husband is saying where he buried her. And then it cuts to edge. And <laughs> she's right there. I love that moment so much. <laughs> it's so good. And now knowing that Ted Raimi is in that suit, just shedding water weight <laughs> like, a, like a trooper. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's 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 the whole thing. Is it's like okay, the first ten minutes, and then you kind of have a little lull where you introduce new characters, but it doesn't last very long. And then you have no. Ash's Ash's possessed demon hand, and there's that whole set piece, and then there's the cellar set piece. Like it just keeps going. It is so well constructed, and I'm 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 blown away because Raby was what mid twenties when he shot this movie. Oh, probably give or take. Maybe creeping up on 30, but I mean, he's still a yeah. very young guy. And yeah. just to show, I mean, it's completely contradicts what I've been talking about, but to show the control that he has for the mayhem that he's creating, it's actually really impressive. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know? Do you want to hear another fun fact about the, the, the mayhem that he created during oh, making that? Oh, definitely. Okay, Absolutely. so... So a lot of things that were created by the the makeup effects team were like were kind of like their own imagination. I mean, obviously with Raimi's uh, guidance, obviously, but they were just like, oh, like so, what kind of creature did you want like popping in, or what? How did you want this dead eye to look? And he would look at them and go, "Didn't you see my storyboard? Do you want to know what a storyboard looked like?" <laughs> what <laughs> it looked like a three-year-old child's doodles just <laughs> stick figures and <laughs> like, uh, like like uh ash's like evil hand he was like he just drew a bigger hand he's like I yeah that's it. just so it's evil so you know it's 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 an evil hand so i want hand, the hand evil. to be possessed somehow so he, it's just like what are you talking about Wow. So now they're making it look like, uh, you know, like deader and more decayed and, you know, with the with the fingernails eventually. And um, and, uh, and they were able to they were the, the part where he makes it walk. That's that's like another camera trick. That was Greg Nicotero's hand going. What? Yeah. So they're that's a, that's an actual hand. Like so they, they put like they basically removed a floorboard and uh, Nicotero was like under the um, like kind of I guess like in the basement and going up like this. Uh, so like, just it, like, there was a, like a certain angle that they, that they were able to hit where like, you just didn't see the gap wow. at all. Well. So, so that hand that's walking across the, that it's an actual hand and it's just a camera trick. Wow. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. 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 And I, and I got yeah. Nick, uh, yeah. And I found, uh, something, uh, 
a video of Nicotero talking about it because whenever they would cut or whenever there's like a moment where they're, you know, setting up or whatever, um, one, they weren't filming, um, you know, Bruce Campbell would just step on his hand. <laughs> 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 you get the feeling that it's just like a whole bunch of buddies hanging out shooting a film and just having yeah. the best time ever yeah. yeah so if it's okay with you guys i just want to divert really quickly to just talk about like the sam raimi community at this point because he's friends with the Cohn brothers and if you if you take a look at um like some of the earlier Cohn brothers movies like like blood simple and especially raising arizona raising arizona and evil dead make a great double feature yeah because it, mm -hmm. It's movies that are shot on the cheap, Don't, not cheap looking, but they're shot on the cheap. They're lower budget movies, but they use so much ingenuity to create these manic Looney Tune-esque scenes that are done so well. And I'm just like blown away by it. It makes perfect sense that they would be friends, yeah. you know, because it's just that that like manic creativity that that comes across on screen in a polished way. That you, yeah, you just like you're you watch the movie and you're like, how the hell did they do that? <laughs> like, how did they do it? Other than they really did drag someone across a forest, and I think that person might be dead now. You know, <laughs> I I do know how they did that scene too. How did they? Oh, come on, I gotta hear it. I gotta hear it. So so she slightly uh so that was uh Cassie Wesley DePiva, right? She played uh Bobby Joe. Bobby. She, um, obviously, obviously that was, you know, they had like little makeup on her with the sticks sticking out, right. but she's actually, uh, elevated and they actually had a runner, um, filled with leaves and twigs and stuff that was just running underneath her. And oh, so like, so she, so she was actually kind of stationary and just scream. She was such a great actress in that. Yeah. Everybody when, is, is great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, oh, but yeah. So, so she's oh. when. So yeah, it's like uh, what do you call it? Like um, kind of like a wheel, but like is a better word. Almost like a treadmill, right? Like a treadmill. That's it. Oh. <laughs> I almost said yeah, a yeah. hamster. I almost said a hamster wheel. <laughs> <laughs> we would have bought that. You, we would have said you, yeah. But you you get the idea. There was a hamster running and creating the the movement. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that but yeah, but that's how they did uh, that scene. That makes okay. so much sense because that looks so dangerous. Yeah. I know. Right? Yeah. The, the first one, she might have been dragged. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I'm embarrassed to say, I really did think that they dragged that poor actor through the woods. And I'm like, how did she not get hurt? Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's take it. Let's take it to the end. Um, and I just want to talk about, I just want to talk about the, the setup for we would get army of darkness which i guess would come five years later four or five years later give or take but, yeah but i love the fact that um Raimi and what did i say scott spiegel i think is uh yeah how they created this you know they truly did create a mythology and this world the world building here and you know what the crazy thing is when we talk about franchises i think it's less so now like people do talk about evil dead especially jonathan to your point and for Evil Dead Rise came out. Um, that really that did well, and so much so that they're they're actually doing two more installments. Ah, uh, yeah, um, good, yeah. So I'm really excited about that. But you know, we talk about franchises. We talk about Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street. And, you know, and and uh, Friday the Thirteenth. And I'm going to go to bat for Evil Dead. This is a really solid franchise. Oh. There are not. I don't know if there's any misses whatsoever. I know people are a little divisive on the 2013 Evil Dead. Mm -hmm. I liked it. Yeah. You know, I, th I think Jane Levy is an incredible actor. I think she does really good work in that that film and talk about getting tortured. I mean, the stuff that she has to do in that film is pretty gnarly. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a really solid franchise. Oh, it is. What are your feelings on army of darkness because that's where we lead at the end i think it's great how we have ashes now in the 13th century and then and then we five years later four or five years later we get army of darkness do you guys like it how do you feel about it i love army of darkness <laughs> I, have you seen it <laughs> i saw it when it came out i okay. saw it at the theater i was a okay. teenager um and i don't remember it i mean i, I remember liking it 
I remember a scene where Ash is supposed to, <laughs> where he's supposed to recite some, you know, and then, and then he just tries to like fudge it. And like, I just remember laughing for like a minute straight afterward that I missed the next bit of the movie because he's so Bruce Campbell. We, I know that everything kind of like leads back to him and Sam Raimi on this, but he's so fantastic. Like he is so funny and so just likable and just amazing. Like he is incredible. My daughter, by the way, if she met him, um, like if she were at a convention, she would be so awestruck because sometimes, let's be honest, like you watch a movie from the 80s, sometimes they're kind of dated. You know, I mean, yeah. some movies just don't age as well. This one, she just like it, it did exactly to her what, Sam Raimi wanted to do to a 1987 audience. Like it's still yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just the same way that it hit me when I saw it. And that's really an incredible testament to him and how timeless it is. But a big part of that was just, was Bruce Campbell. He's just so engaging through the whole thing. You can't look away. Anytime he's on the screen, you're just mesmerized. When, when, when he just, when one eyebrow goes up. Right. He, does, like, he, does, <laughs> he, he speaks more with his eyebrow than most people speak with their entire bodies and voices. Um, so I remember liking Army of Darkness because of Bruce Campbell. Um, just mm -hmm. off the top of my head, if I had to rank and this is going to make a lot of people mad. If I had to <laughs> if I had to rank, I might put probably Evil Dead um, from 2013 and Army of Darkness pretty close together for the four or five spot. The thing about Evil mm -hmm. 2013 that I really liked. I love, I love the payoff of that movie. That like went there. It got so bloody and so yeah, intense. Yeah. I, I thought it was just really gutsy. I thought it was no pun intended, but I just thought it was so awesome. <laughs> like, wow, they really, they, they, they weren't, they, they were, there were no half measures in that movie. Like they went, all no, the yeah. they tortured everybody in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. A lot of cringe worthy <laughs> moments. <laughs> love that, that movie. So I, and so, with with the with the um disclaimer that I love all five, I mean I I, I really like or love all five, but for me it's evil it's it's Ar Evil Dead 2013 and Army of Darkness would be at the last spot, probably um Evil Dead, the original would be the next you know rung if we're building our way up, and then for me Evil Dead Two and Evil Dead Rise are at the top, and it just depends on what mood I'm in probably because if I want fun yeah. with Evil Dead Two. If I want you, if I want fun and some scares, I go to Evil Dead Rise probably. I don't know. Yeah, I, I will. I I can't wait because you're gonna have to get back to us when you finally get a chance to watch Drag Me to Hell. Yeah, I can't wait yeah, because oh, yeah. because you're gonna you, you might have to reconfigure your. Uh, I don't know. I'm curious on where you would put that one because if you basically the best way to describe Drag Me to Hell in a quick nutshell is that if you love Evil Dead Two, you're gonna you're gonna appreciate Drag Me to Hell. Ah, okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So it's like it's on that level. Nice. Wow. That's high praise. Yeah. Super high. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. I'm I'm with Jonathan though. Your ranking, I think it's spot on because I really did love Evil Dead Rise. It is very frightening. It and is. the the effect work is next level, especially the third act. Oh boy. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who who hasn't seen it, but it builds and builds and builds, and there's it pays off. Um, but yeah, it's it's what mood am I in? Do I want a couple of laughs or do I just want to get this thing to scare the hell out of me? Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's rainy. nice that we have those uh we have those options, you know. Yes, it is. Yeah. What a friend. <laughs> yeah. I wish because I'm bad at my job, I didn't look up to see what Sam Raimi is doing next. I'm hoping it's a horror movie. I'm hoping that he's that he's getting back into horror. Um look, I get it that Spider Man you know, ma major studio uh, is interested in you. And then you get this franchise and you're doing these movies and they take a lot of time. But boy, oh boy, would I love for him to get back to, to his roots and just make a kick-ass horror movie. If we can get Spielberg possibly doing a scary UFO movie next year, then maybe we can get right. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Spielberg is my favorite <laughs> of all time. Um, <clears throat> one, one cool thing, like I don't know what Raimi is doing next, but one thing I know uh, is the ghost house continues to be extremely like active and excited and they're, they're all about horror like they're so those because I, I'm, I'm 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 lucky to know one of uh the, the the people there and it's just like i don't know it's like they know what they're doing 
They love horror. They're super skillful and astute. And they, they just, it's, it's just like, if you like the whole vibe of ghost house, just, it just makes me feel happy for the future because you just know, mm-hmm. like Evil dead rise was just confirmation of all I'm saying, but it's like, you watch that movie in every facet of it. They just, it was so sure handed. And there are so many awesome things that are happening in that movie that like you, you like, uh, a lesser studio and like Lee Cronin, the director, it's like in lesser hands, you couldn't have like five minutes of that movie go as well as it did. But the whole movie really goes that well. Like the whole movie is just like continually knocking it out of the park. I feel I just, I I, I love ghost house and I just, I, I, I don't know. I, I really am, am impressed and, and I just love what they do. Lee awesome. Cronin's amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Incredible. Huh? Yeah. Um, the, uh, what's, what's that one hole in the ground? What, what's it called? Uh, you know, the one I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, no, it's hole in the ground. Yeah. I, yeah. I think it is it, hole in the ground. Like the Irish movie. Rise, <clears throat> my daughter and I went back and, and watched hole in the ground and that's a damn good movie. That's a really good film. So it wasn't scary, so. just a one-off thing that Lee Crow, like, I mean, I'm sure you all knew that already, but like for me, I was like, oh yeah, this guy, this he's, I'm going to watch anything he makes. Like, this is a really great director. <laughs> and Jonathan, I can I can tell you, being Irish, uh, that hole in the ground movie, every single bit of that is true. It's almost a do- it's a documentary. <laughs> all, <laughs> well, well, all I'm the- staying here. I'm not going to visit. <laughs> <laughs> the Irish tourism board doesn't want you to know these things, but I'm blowing the lid off of it. All of those stories are true. Well, all the wee beasts. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I tell Shannon all the time. I used to, because my mom came over when she was 19 from Limerick and we used to go back and visit every year. And um, my cousins would just scare the hell out of me with these Irish ghost stories and, and folk tales. And I think it was just like, they just couldn't wait to scare the American and I'm gullible as hell. So I believed everything. <laughs> I mean, I still do, but these sons of bitches. Yeah. You know what? They're not invited to my birthday party anymore. <laughs> they tormented me. That'll show them. <laughs> All right. So I feel like we did. I feel like we did justice to Evil Dead 2. Now, Jonathan, if you're game for it, we have our three silly questions, which we ask all our guests. Um, Great. Great. So the first one is uh, give us your when were you most scared? It could be a movie. It could actually be a real life experience like, uh, you know, Shannon and I always say, oh, you're kayaking and a uh, great white shark goes underneath your kayak. Like, what <laughs> is the most you've ever been scared? Man, um, I don't know. I just feel like in the spirit of Evil Dead 2, I'm going to keep it to the cinematic world because I don't want to go for it. Yeah. I want to bring us down. I don't want to bring anything like <laughs> bad or awful. So um, I'm going to say, uh, a couple of films, a couple of film moments that, that genuinely terrified me were um, Lake Mungo. Uh, mm-hmm. I uh, there's if you if you've you both have seen Lake Mungo, so I have not. Okay, why well, don't want oh, to Shannon throw oh, okay. There is a scene where like because it's like it's sort of a found footage movie, right? I mean, it's not yeah. technically found footage because it's kind of a documentary, faux documentary, whatever. But there's something that somebody sees on, on on a device, like they watch footage of something, and there, okay. there's a, there's a moment from from one of those portions of that movie near the end that is so scary that like it gave me this that and it still like reverberates. I saw it maybe four years ago. This existential terror, like I when I first saw it, I would wake up in the middle of the night and be afraid that I was going to see what this what they saw on this tape it is so horrifying and scary partially because of the execution of how it's done but then also the ramifications of it um like lake mungo has such look at me i'm I'm taking the air out of the room i am getting dark and unhappy and sad and <laughs> horrible because it's a very sad movie but it's also it is. so scary um so lake mungo's one um another uh one that really scared me was um was host uh just scared mm. the, the hell out of me just really frightened me um so both of those and, and then I'll, I'll throw a third out there is uh i'll throw no two more taking of deborah logan scared me the oh death. so good 
that's so scary. Like that movie, the, I, that just, it goes, the, the one thing about that one, the other one I was going to mention was Hell House LLC, which I love. But taking of Deborah Logan, the thing about that was I was, uh, I was thinking to myself, like I was like doubting my own perceptions because it just got better and better and scarier and scarier. And I was watching it. I was thinking this, surely I'm just like overreacting to this because I would have heard more about this. Like every horror fan, if this is as scary as I feel like it is, every horror fan everywhere should be talking about this like nonstop. That's how that's how frightened I was of taking a De- of Deborah Logan. But then I was okay. like, no, this is that scary. I, I you know, I'm like, because yeah. I, I, I just felt like that movie, as I love a movie, with, as I said earlier, with the payoff. And that one just keeps like upping itself and getting scarier and scarier. And then and then it has a payoff. Like some of the final images, you're like, oh, oh my gosh, what the, is that, is that really <laughs> happening? And they go there and it's like, I was like, yes, I just love it. I love big swings. I don't care. Me too. Because sometimes movies miss at the end, but I, I so respect, I have so much affection for those big, massive swings. You swing out of your cleats. You're trying to knock it, not, not just a home run, you're trying to knock it out of the park. I love it when directors do that. And, and that movie did that. Taking of Deborah Logan took a massive swing. Those nice. are great suggestions. Shannon, you have got a treat. A very Yeah, I wrote them all down. <laughs> I, I don't know if I would call it a treat. It is going to affect you. Lake Mungo is going to affect you. But boy, it's such a great movie. Yeah, yeah it's you, on Tubi. Yeah. You got to check that one out. <laughs> Man, it's, it's, okay. It, yeah. All right, Shannon, you've got the second question. What do we got? All right. So the second question is, uh, what is a trash movie that you love? So basically it's considered to be a terrible movie. Uh, not a lot of people like it, but you will defend it to the death. Oh, it's so funny. Um, by the way, I, I just feel like I have to say, so my buddy right here, Josh Mallerman is calling right now. <laughs> Let me That's quickly okay. just make a plug. He wrote a book called Incidents Around the House. Have you guys heard about I can't that? wait to read that. That book is the equivalent of the movies I'm talking about, like Paranormal Activity. Ooh. Like when Paranormal Activity first came out and it like sent the shockwave through the horror world, that's what the- Oh, yes, it did. <laughs> book, yes, it did. <laughs> is that scary? This book is just utterly terrifying. And I just, I cannot wait for everybody to read it. Like, like you know, people are reading advanced copies and stuff. You just wait. Like this is, it's one of the scariest books I've read in 20 years. Um, wow. okay, so, okay, so sorry. Trash movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know, a movie that's uh, two movies that aren't trash movies that I don't think people talk about enough. They're horror comedies. So this is not answering your question. I am going to try to answer your question. Two horror <laughs> comedies that I love are Slacks and, um, and, uh, Psych- to- Psycho Gorman. I love both those, uh, horror comedies. Okay. Yeah. They're Slacks great. we're going to what- talk about next, actually. <laughs> It's so, yeah. so much fun. Um, okay, it really is. I'm trying to think of a bad movie that that I like that other that, that people that people don't. I'm sure there are some. I'm sure there are some. I just well, here's what we'll do. Here's what we'll do. We'll buy us some time because yeah. we always really enjoy putting the boots to Andy Davidson, whose favorite garbage <laughs> movie was Howard the Duck, and we try <laughs> we try to bring it up every episode and make fun of Andy. Who's the sweetest man alive? Yes, he is. And right, right. deserves none, none of our ridicule. It's right. completely <laughs> unearned. He was just being a very genuine, nice person. And every episode, we try to make fun of him at least once. <laughs> Andy, that is awesome. <laughs> that is great. You know, a movie that I, I don't know if it's trash or not, but I just like watched over and over again in college was, uh, was uh, The Doors. Uh, it's not trash. All right. Oliver Stone movie. It's a pretty famous movie. All right. But I'm trying yeah, yeah, yeah. to remember the critical reception of that. I think I looked it up on Rotten Tomatoes recently, and it was it was negative. Like it was in the it was in the green, right? It was like a green splat. Yeah, it was a green <laughs> splat. And I and I so so that's, that's a movie that I probably like more than other people, just because I was obsessed with the Doors in college, like every college kid at that time. Yeah. Anyway, that that'll sort of answer your question, sort of. We'll let you get away no, with that. We'll that's let you get okay. away with that. All right. Okay. <laughs> the third question is. Uh, is there a movie, and it's okay if you say, no, I'm good with all movies the way they are. Is there a movie out there that you would love to see remade, and what movie would that be? <clears throat> That's super interesting. Remade. Um, 
Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. I, Cause you, you, when I, when I wade into that topic, when anybody wades into that topic, you're going to like start to knock up against some movies that people feel are sacred. There's certain, th I'm not, honestly, I'm not somebody that gets bothered by remakes most of the time. Like, Me neither. like there's like such a hatred of that. Like you see it and people are like, Oh, you know, how about, you know, do something original. You suck. I, this is why all this is why nobody goes to movies. I don't, I don't have that reaction. Like, I'm either interested or not that interested, but I never get mad about it the way that people get yeah. mad. Yeah. <laughs> I can say one I don't want remade. I wouldn't get mad about it, but I just wouldn't want them to remake it as Jaws. I think it's perfect. I don't, I don't want them to remake that. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, like, okay, so the movie, uh, The Omen, um, I could see that being, that, that's a good movie. Like, it's a good movie, really well acted and stuff. I could see that being, because the only reason I say that is because the first Omen just came out uh, recently and was fantastic. I, I don't know how you all felt. I love. I haven't seen it yet. I love. I know. I didn't get a chance. Yeah, like incredible acting, incredible direction, just really, really good movie. Really un unnerving and effective. So I could see Ooh. them doing like um, either the Omen redone or like the Omen two, maybe um, something in that franchise. Uh, you know, another movie that I feel like wasn't that scary when i rewatched it was the original amityville horror um right. and i know they remade that with ryan reynolds and i know that got bad reviews but maybe that's <laughs> one i don't know and you know okay so um you know friday the 13th um is another one i know there have been a lot of a, a lot of people talking about like that franchise right there's been a lot of like mm -hmm. false starts and buzz about and there, there might be this there might be that and the rights are here or the rights are there uh, that's a movie that I could see being redone and done really, really well. So that could be fun. Cause I'm somebody who liked, I liked Cabin in the Woods. Um, I just rewatched that. I love that movie. Loved, loved Cabin that. in the Woods. That, it just, I don't know. I feel like, like, cause you know, cause they, they have a full, they had a full grasp of what that was all about. So I feel like somebody with a full grasp of Friday the 13th could really remake it and make it cool. I don't know. Those are just off the top of my head. So like, you about like the original one, like before, even before Jason was thrown into the mix. Yeah. It's like, it's like, Cause, what cause I, they've never done that. It's all, it's been about Jason ever since. Right. Yeah. Right. About the hockey. You know, hockey. if you think about it. Yeah. Yeah. The original, the killer turned out, I mean, I don't want to spoil. Can you spoil a movie that old, but it's not right. No, but, it's not to be. I'll do it. Yeah. It's our podcast. <laughs> do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Yeah. And Sean knows I have a very special, a uh, very special spot it uh, for, um, for the for the second one, for uh, because that was yeah because so there's a kind of a, a story with that we'll yeah. probably also we'll probably save the whole story for uh, maybe a whole other episode when we finally do it Sean but <laughs> okay but, I got um, your message loud and clear <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but the short version is that uh, the guy who actually wore the pillowcase and did you know like ninety eight percent of the movie was Steve Dash and he was a very very close family friend oh. to to the point where like we we all called him Uncle Steve so he's not like blood related to me so I can't say that you know I'm not gonna make his family mad sorry but uh, but him him and my uncle grew up since they were like in diapers. Okay. Like literally born around the same time or whatever and been friends ever since uh, you know, their entire lives up until his uh recent passing. That's so awesome. that's awesome. That's a, that's uh, a yeah, so I have a special place in my heart for for that one. Okay, that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, we love that. Yeah. So so the first one was the not Jason, the second one was the burlap, right? It was his mom. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was like a pillowcase, and that and then the third one, there was like a prankster who was like playing pranks on everybody, and he wore a hockey mask there we to go. scare one of the girls. And then after he got killed, um, yeah, then Jason took his mask and then it just gotcha. became the iconic symbol ever since. Yeah, yeah. I, I bet like, you know, like you know this and you know that, but I, I bet like the, the average horror fan today probably isn't particularly aware of all that. Like probably the yeah. average horror fan, and this is not a put down, but it's like, you know, because you've really got to go back and watch those movies to know those things. Yeah, and there's a lot to remember. <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. Yeah, but I think there's, there's life in that franchise. Um, I forget when I saw the newer Friday the 13th, the newest one that was made. Um, but I remember that having some... I, when was that? Like 2000... With 
Oh, with Jared Padalecki? Like 2015? Eleven. Maybe like some like 2011, maybe yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. I just remember that having some energy. Like, I don't know. I I I don't remember it being like amazing, but I remember it being like okay and having some yeah. energy. Um, so I just, I, th I feel like that franchise is one, even though everybody knows Jason, right? I just feel like that's a franchise where there, you could do a lot with the lore. You could do a lot with, uh, a I'm with you. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's pretty, it's pretty fertile ground for, for a relaunch for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That was 2009. There we go. Okay. Oh, all yeah. right. So yeah. So it's time. Why not? All right. So Jonathan, that was our silly three questions. Thanks for playing along. We appreciate oh, okay. it. All right. Before we wrap up, I want to give you ample time. Let's talk about, um, we talked about the projects. Let's let's just explore any other things that you have that you want anyone to know about. But I'd really like you to also give uh, people, our, our listeners, where they can find you. Yeah. So, you know, have at it. Sure, absolutely. So to find me, uh, uh, jonathanjans.com has like, my. we can sign up for my newsletter there. That's where all my links are. I'm, I'm pretty much... I'm either active or like occasionally active on most of the social media sites. So Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, threads, blue sky, um, TikTok occasionally. Um, and then Goodreads, whatever you can find my books pretty much anywhere. Um, but Perfect. like, uh, stuff I've got coming out. So, so coming out this coming year, uh, there's some just really fast here. A couple exciting things. So I thought, oh, take your time. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate. It. I just didn't want to like. I don't know. I don't. I don't want to overstay my welcome. But you're always making me. Feel not good. at all. No, not at all. Not at all. It's not a bomb going to go off. I promise. <laughs> good, good. All right. So yeah, Children of the Dark. I'd love for people to check that out. That one and two. Um, but then also uh, in the next like whatever in the next eighteen months we'll have. I think Marla finally is going to come out in a mass market edition. Um, we're getting close with it with some publishers with Marla. It was done in a, in, in a limited edition and it's a book I just love so much and I'm dying for a mass audience to read. So that'll hopefully be in the next 18 months. Um, I've got uh, a, a short story in this uh, a year from now um, coming in the Stephen King anthology edited by brian keen and christopher gould and it's the stand oh, uh tale end of the world as we know it uh tales from the stand stephen king's novel and i wrote my story and it's already edited and, and you know the publisher has it and all that stuff so that's super exciting i'm really proud of that story I, i've worked harder i worked harder on that story than any short story i've written because stephen king is my guy uh he's the reason i'm a writer and a reader so um that's coming a year from now and then in September of 25, I have a sci-fi horror novel called Veil, uh, V-E-I-L, coming out with Blackstone Publishing that I'm super en enthusiastic about. I just can't wait for people to read. And um, and there's, yeah, so, and then on the other side of it, like the, the movie TV side, there's there are things I can't talk about that are like, oh, no, yeah, and I'd love to talk it's about it. But I just, I, I would love to, yeah. And I'm I, like, even now, the the thing I'm working on now, um, there's a lot of like, I'm, I'm 40,000 word, no, 43,000 words into like a 70,000 word novel. I'll be finishing that in a couple of weeks, the rough draft of it. And um, I'm developing it with uh, a producer and I'm really excited about it. Um, so that, that have been, so what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank this you. Is crazy yeah, it's this crazy. is so exciting yeah it's fun. yeah yeah well you're gonna uh, i guess you're gonna have to come back on when you can talk about that he's happening I again i'd love to be here again this yeah. is so much fun. maybe we'll, we'll talk about drag me to hell <laughs> oh i gotta see it we can we can well, yeah i just i can't believe i just i, I realize what a gap that is in my viewing i know that i should have seen it by now but i will definitely see it this summer yeah Oh, absolutely. No, there's definitely so many things that I haven't gotten a chance to see that I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I get a little ashamed myself as well. But. but that's the thing, like we feel shame about that. But your reactions, both of your reactions, they're the reactions that I have because <laughs> you have so many. I hate this word. Probably I don't want to misapply this word, but you have a lot of like edge lords in horror or at least some that are like, I mean, you know where I see this, I, I, not to rant or anything. I see this most often like like directed toward women. Um, mm -hmm. like, like usually it's men who do, do this crap. Because um, I, I, one of my, 
this is I, I shouldn't go here because this is like a negative. No, go, go, please, go, it's, go. My, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. <laughs> youngest daughter is is a thirteen year old. She's she's finished seventh grade, and she likes the Cubs, and like and not 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 that many boys, but there will be some boys who are like will name one player on the Cubs. Ugh. You can't name a player, and then she goes <laughs> through the entire twenty five man roster. And the entire coaching staff and knows the third base coach and she knows the triple A players and she's like, Come at me, right? No, you want your stats. Yeah. 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 And I I hear that. And and the two reactions I have are A, I'm proud of her for standing up for herself. But Mm -hmm. B, I'm so pissed off. I'm like, what, you know, what what are we teaching? How how can this in 2024, how can we still have this misogyny? How can we still have this just total crap? That, that that girls or women or whatever have to deal with and um and so Juliet, my daughter who's a horror fan like she gets that a little bit but um i guess getting back to my main point is you know when people hear that you haven't seen this or you haven't read that i'm just so bewildered when when the reaction is well you're not a horror fan what the hell? <laughs> or you say you're a big horror fan but you haven't seen this you're not a horror fan my reaction is always Oh, I'm so excited for you. You're going to love this so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. I wish I could watch it with you. I end right? this so much because like, why wouldn't you be excited? Like, because they want to see it. They're excited about us seeing it. They haven't yet. That's something to get excited about. Why would that be a reason to judge somebody? Why would that be a reason to like separate yourself to all? Oh, I'm a real horror fan, but you're not, or I'm a real Cubs fan, but you're not. I just, I yeah. kind of crap. Why do people do that? Dude, I'm so people, glad you said that. Yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> I, we agree with you. Yeah. It's just, people just need to, for some reason, find like, if they think like, Oh, you're like, they see you on a pedestal of like, Oh, you know about this. Well, let me see if I can get on the higher pedestal. It's, it's, it, it was always like that. I remember like even in high school, like a girl would wear a band t-shirt and people would yes. go up to them and be like, Oh, and like, do, like what's your favorite song? Yeah. yeah. Oh, or, like, so- you know, just like, you know, fuck off. That's the name of the song. Fuck off. I never get it because I'm always like, well, why wouldn't you want to share this incredible gift? Why would you want to turn people away from it? You know, by being a, a, a dick. You know, yeah, you're like, no, no, it's true. It's true, though. It makes it makes no sense. It's, it's you know, it's not nice. People, come on, just be nice. And then, it's nice. Fine. And let's be <laughs> all, and then it's but, but like in each story, I don't think it's a coincidence that it's that we're talking about guys doing this to right? Like you were talking about, like they weren't going over to their fellow, they weren't saying, hey, hey, John, you know, name a song from that Guns N' Roses album, right? Mm -hmm, It just, mm -hmm. oh, they just, you're right. But it's like, I, I, that kind of, I don't know, man, it's, it's one of my, oh, it's just, it it enrages me (laughs) so much. And I, I, it would enrage me anyway, but it especially enrages me just because I see my daughters dealing with it. It's just so just frustrating. And yeah. I, I just th- I'll just throw this out there because since we started the podcast in, in August and we've been so fortunate to have guests like yourself come on, but you know, and and I learned something you tonight. I learned something from every guest that we have. But I'll tell you the the volumes and the world that's been open to me from our female guests that have come on, Sadie Hartman and Emily Hughes in particular. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sadie Hart Sadie Hartman, I, I you know she emails me. Hey, here's. Here's five, here's five, six um, gothic horror novels uh, written by women that we were talking about when we did Rosemary's Baby. Hey, yeah. you know what? Because I asked her, I'm like, hey, could you recommend some stuff? But just like they, they, they absolutely broadened my horizons toward literature and movies and, uh, and just also being like a decent, cool person, you know? So it's, it's like that's the attitude that you want to have. It's the giving. Yeah. You no, know? it's, the, it's the giving attitude. Whereas I, I find like those, those, those dudes that you're talking about and it is always shitty dudes they're like this is mine and yeah. you can't have it you know and it's like no it's this is it's for everyone oh, you know somebody somebody never left the playroom from kindergarten right yeah yes yeah yes 100 percent. Right, if, if i can give any advice at all at least something that's that's helped me in case there's any sinners out there that still deal with this shit yeah honestly please. all i've ever done is completely took away their voice and i but it, people like that, I would stop talking to you. If you did me wrong, I stopped talking to you. And I never spoke to you ever again. 
people will comment sometimes on, on my stuff. Sometimes if I put up a movie review, there's sometimes people who will like hated the movie and, oh my God, did we even watch the same movie? And then they'll make a whole big comment where they bash, you know, and all I go is, you know, you know thank you for your opinion. Like maybe that's, yeah. I'll say that if I say anything at all. Yeah. So if I don't, if I don't reply to you, it's because you're being a dick. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not giving you a voice to to go back yeah. and forth because you are literally not worth my time. Like, that's it. There's something Good about that too, like like a terrible remark. Somebody's just said something <laughs> thoughtless or stupid. That just letting it hang there, right? Mm -hmm. Letting it hang there is an example of of just being a total idiot, right? Oh yeah, I left it yeah. there. I didn't. I never took it down. Well, ever. Yeah. No. You're, well, yeah. You're left there to to. Hang. <laughs> Some, there's something poetic about that, right? Let let this be the example of what a tool you are, right? So everybody can see. And I'm not going to waste my time responding to you, but I am going to let people see what a, what a moron. I, I love that. I think that's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, this to, some to people. be our best episode ever. I love this last 10 minutes that we had on this podcast. We got a little salty. We got a little salty. We got a little salty. I like it. I like it. You know what, Jonathan? It needed to be said. It needed to be said. I feel like it. Yeah. I just, I don't, it makes me mad. I don't like it. I'm not an angry person, but I get angry when I see that. It's just so yeah. stupid and so frustrating. And it's just, it's yeah. so, it's so weak. It's just so, such a show of weakness. Like you're so insecure mm -hmm. that you're trying to bar somebody from liking yeah. what you like or l knowing about what you know about. Like how weak are you to not want to share that? Like you said, like like never yeah. graduated from the playroom. Like these are my blocks. Nobody can yeah. play with my blocks. This is my movie. I don't want anybody to know about my movie. Oh, and especially a girl, right? You can't, you can't. Yeah cubs you can't like this this it's like come on right Can and and also it's probably coming from a different place too because you're a father you know you're you're a papa bear protecting your cubs <laughs> <laughs> oh. maybe come on i don't know i thought of it in my head and i had to say it <laughs> maybe there, there is like that but like you talk about you talked about sadie she's been on the show i've seen her treated badly because yes. because she's a woman what? like i oh what? yeah like i mean you know we this know what a sweetest we, we know being what, like ever like no but but twitter for example is such a hellscape like there's uh -huh. i'm there because <laughs> people i know are there and because i'm trying to like you know whatever well I, you have a brand you have to right. promote it i yeah exactly but but i when she was on twitter there for a while like people would say the the, the most ridiculous things to her that I just knew they would not say to other people. They wouldn't, they, they, that they wouldn't say to a man. That's frankly. That's disgusting. Like, like she, would, yeah. she would be treated because she, you know, had this growing brand, had this growing following. And then people were resentful of that, partially because of her success, but also partially, I think, because she was a woman. I just think that there yeah. is still, we, we have like improved as a society, but we've not, I don't think we've improved nearly as much not nearly as much as maybe we think we have because like for that to even be a thing and to be such mm -hmm. a prominent, prominent thing, like that just shows like how we're still in our baby steps to, to, to like yeah. evolve to where we need. Yeah. To. Well, yeah, jokes I on agree. them. Cause she just won a, a Stoker award for her book, a hundred, hundred, hundred horror books to read before you're murdered. Yep. Right. Did I get that right? Jesus. Sure. It's a long yeah. title. What Sorry, a, Sadie. What a great title. <laughs> yep. She won Saturday night, which is awesome. Yeah. She, Yay. Oh. so jokes on you. Yep. Idiots. Last, last laugh is, is hers for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we are here that's, for it. <laughs> that's a perfect, perfect note to go out on. I, I, I want to wrap it up there. Cause that, that is the perfect note to go out on. We've made some strides, but there's a lot further to go. For mm -hmm. sure. Yes. For sure. Jonathan, can't thank you enough for coming on. We're having your ass back. <laughs> yeah. I went on it. I'm back. Uh, anytime you yeah, anytime you want, I'll be back. I'd love to. Yay. Oh fantastic. Well well look, I mean you've you've got so many you got so many things uh coming out in the future. So I'll email you. We'll set something up down the road. Um by the way, I didn't want to put you on the spot. You made me so happy when you were talking about the fact that you're working uh, with a producer and you know film and tv is on the horizon because your books are so cinematic 
Oh my god, they're so cinematic. So you, you, you just that was like a, a, a an early gift. I'm so excited for it. But thank you, thank you. Uh, really appreciate you coming out. And um, Shannon, take us out. And that's a cut. Take care, everyone. Thank Bye. you, Jonathan. Thank you. You two are all.